Here on the bench today we have a B&K Precision. It's the model 747B tube tester. This is a solid state dynamic mutual conductance tube tester. And the customer bought it from eBay and got it home and it did not work correctly. So he opened it up and he called me. He said there was two bubs in the back and one of them was out. So he ordered some new M57 pubs. There's two in the circuit in the back that uh, balance out the grid circuit. And he got those replaced. And when he did his test, he said that every tube he put in there checked good on the test. But on grid emissions, every tube failed. So I went ahead and got it out of the case. I got it sitting on the bench. I just showed this in another video some time back on future video, uh, recent, you know, repair videos. So we got it out of the case and got it on the stands. And get to turn around here. And look at the back of it. And you can see it is a rat nest of wires <laughs> I mean there's wires running everywhere and this is standard everything looks like it's supposed to but we got this circuit board over here and if we'll focus in on this circuit board you know here's the two M57 bulbs that were replaced and you can see a lot of electrolytics on here and also some some resistors and you see there's two um, cement style resistors here that are look like they have been completely overheating they are 18 ohm 5 watt resistors and they're so bad that the uh, writing on them is just about faded off where well, they've been heated so much over the years you can see a lot of other big power resistors in here so just like the game plan is to go ahead and get this board loose and let's go ahead and get these electrolytics right to start with changed out. I think there's five in here. There's two here, there's two over here, there's one across the meter. So we'll need to go ahead and pull all those out and let's go ahead and get them replaced. You know, before we even start trying or, or doing anything. He did try to go through the alignment process and could not align it. He said he ran out of adjustments on one of the uh, variable resistors down here. So that tells me that, you know, we do have a major problem in the circuit. And the best thing to do is go ahead and get these caps out and get some new caps in. And to get the board out, I think all we have to do is disconnect these two nuts across the meter and we should be able to lay our board over so we can get to the back and uh, desorter these caps all right I have the two nuts off and we should be able to slip this little these two wires and the, the capacitor there off We'll set them over to the side. Now I do want to warn you that there is a lot of wiring here and these things are old. So go ahead and just take you some overall pictures. Even though we you know we do have the manual and schematic on it, it's a lot easier if you got pictures in case one of these wires was to break off. We will be able to uh look at the pictures and see exactly or whereabouts where the wire went instead of trying to hunt through the schematic and uh, figure it out because I don't think there's no color coding on the uh, on the schematic at all so you know you would have to look at where the wire is hooked to or you know by tracing it out through all this spaghetti and finding out where it's going and look at the schematic and see where the other end hooks at so you know it's just best to go ahead and take pictures of it in, just in case of that let's see temperature on the iron should be hot we'll go ahead and have a short wire here so 
So we're going to go ahead and remove it from this variable resistor. Hopefully. Okay, so we got that loose. And we can pull this board out and look behind it. And there's one resistor back there behind it on the terminal strip and the transistor, but that shouldn't be no problems. So we can now see the uh, back of the sort of trace, you know, so we can get to the circuit board and go ahead and get these caps out. Alright, get on. Desoldering tool. Your capacitors are never going to get better, so you just go ahead and get them out of here. No need of hunting down problems that could be caused by capacitors that are old. And both of them are 22 microfarads at 250 volts. Two smaller ones over here on the side, and the air conditions kicked in. It's been a little bit cool here this week, but uh, during the day it's been warming up a little bit. This morning was cool enough to have a white jacket on. Two hundred twenty at twenty five volt. And one hundred fifty microfarad at fifty volt. Right, we go ahead and find some new caps and get in here. at 250s and these are rated at 105 degrees C over top of the uh, other ones that was in here that was rated at 85 degrees C we'll just use the back of the board to uh, figure out which bend these at Should be able to do the other one. Exactly. 
exact same way. Don't have to be perfect. Right, of course, when the positive goes towards the bottom. Second one, the positive goes towards the top. soldered in. I went ahead and up the voltage on these uh, capacitors. Since my supplier did not carry a 220 at 25 volt, I just went ahead to 220 at 50 volt. That's not going to hurt a thing. Now a lot of times you can use your old capacitors to get your lead spacing right when it's in a tight spot like this. And this is definitely at a uh, in a tight spot. <laughs> Get our 150 up here. So we've got new test equipment, and I've been playing around with that off and on since it come in. Just haven't had a lot of time to do a, a lot of stuff here lately, but we'll get to it. I had uh, one person leave a comment that he was missing the uh, 101 series on the Yazoo FT-101. That's not been forgotten. It's just that sometimes paying customers get the uh, the what's next instead of what I want to do thing. And you know, not every repair gets to be uh, video because if I spent time to record every repair I was doing. I probably wouldn't get a whole lot out of it. I'm working through the uh, B-21 Sony. And that's a uh, one that is being videoed. And is a lot of work. In that unit. Now somebody did ask me. How much time did I have in the uh, the 320 repair? 
that was that Sony's 320 we did for mail. Well, that was about somewhere around 25 hours in that repair. So that was a lot of work. And, you know, that was hours and hours of video footage. But, you know, all of them didn't make it onto the, uh, the video. But, you know, it is what it is. Alright, so now we got this uh, 220 at 6.3 and I'm going to put the uh, lugs back on here just to hold the lugs in place while I will remove the capacitors. That will make it a whole lot easier. But yeah, um, lots of time in that, that repair. It took quite a while to get that thing up and running and uh, Mel emailed me and told me he was very happy with it and just loved the way that that new LED board in it looked so that was that's always good news to hear let me grab a nut driver and I laid it down somewhere and don't know what I did with it Okay, so I decided not to uh, mount that yet and do soldering on it because I had a second I won't thinking, but you know this is connect directly to the meter, so we don't want to be uh, introducing no uh, heat or whatever to those meter terminals. So hopefully I can just hold these. And see if we can get our desoldering tool up here and get some of this solder off. Work like a charm. Just find a lead that's bent over. Soldering, desoldering tool in there and work it right out. As you can see, the whole lug fell off of that when we moved all the solder. That's okay. Go ahead and just put this little tunnel back in place. So, I'm not going to do a video on this particular unit. Well, there's really not a whole lot of technical stuff in a tube tester, you know. But I was already in the shop, grabbed the video camera, went to it. Alright, I need to find a 220 at 6.3 volts. Just to get the spacing right on the uh, capacitor lead, so we just put these uh, nuts back and terminals back on. I'm not going to solder it. So y'all are not getting a lot of the detail of what's going on. But then again, you know, it's not really that exciting. <laughs> what I'm doing here is just... But this is the plus side of the meter. This is the ground side.
and clamp it over real good. Okay, now we'll take those back off and solder them up. Sometimes it's a lot easier to do like this when you got problems with your hands and uh, so I don't have the splints on the, at the moment but sometimes it's hard to work with them things on your hands. Side solder down. Alright, that's back together. I want to take these resistors loose and this just check the value on them. I'm going to just desolder one end of them. With the way that they're working, they're not going to give a uh, accurate reading. And those are 16 ohm. Exactly 16.1 ohm. And that one's at 16.4 ohm. So we're not going to replace those. We're just going to leave them right in there. So that's done. All the electrolytics are in. Now it's time we can put this back together, button it up, and do a little testing. Then we'll see if we can be able to uh, tune it and see if we can get it in calibration now. Okay, new caps are installed. Ground wire is back on the part. We know that these two resistors are fine. I went ahead and checked this one and these other resistors up here and for the most part they are all checking pretty good. The only thing I haven't checked are these 150s down here so I need to check those and see how they look. Okay, well first test is we have to uh, adjust the signal voltage. And to do this, we'll tie our ground to pin 7, which is chassis ground, and our positive of our probe to pin 1. We set the uh, vacuum tube voltmeter for 5 volt scale, AC. And what we're going to do is come over here and press test button 2. And arms leaning on the probe and changing the uh so uh what we need to do now i've got r21 and let me uh move the camera here so you can see this r21 is down here this is our signal level adjustment and we're on pin one and seven up here with the vacuum tube voltmeter and it is set to 5 volts on the uh, AC scale and we need to adjust it for 1.5 volts and when he tried it would not adjust so when you mash the button it's going to go full scale and we're pretty much uh, close to it and look at that 1.5 volts so that part looks good and we'll move on to the next test all right so the next adjustment is the uh, bias voltage we connect to the same point as were before pin one of two one and chassis ground 
and um, we'll be looking for minus 2.5 volts DC so I have the uh, needle connected and you see it goes full scale we on the DC minus and we'll push the button and we're getting about 2.1 volts I can adjust it down but I cannot adjust it up any further so it's about 2.1 volts that may or may not be a problem but we'll have to look at the schematic and um, we'll go back and finish up the uh, needle bridge balance and make sure that's okay and uh, then we'll have to come back and, and check this adjustment again So for our next test, we want to uh, calibrate the meter bridge balance and we do that by taking a 10k resistor and going from pin 2 to pin 5 and soldering that in place. A 5 watt would be good, I just happen to have a 10 watt here on the bench so that's what I grabbed. Turn the unit around. Hold the other leads out of the way. And plug it back in. Let it warm up a minute. We'll take the uh, sensitivity and turn it to exactly 100 and we're going to press the uh, test one button and our meter should be on zero and you see we're getting a negative reading so what we got to do is adjust R4 and just to let you know where R4 is it's this part that's located right here mounted to this um, piece of sheet metal so that's what we'll need to adjust next okay so we'll get back here and I'll get the uh, tuning tool into this variable resistor Never easy. We'll press the test button. Turn the unit off. Let it bleed down for a moment. I just want to verify that we are on zero. It was off just a little bit. We'll turn it back on. Warm up a second. Just a tad low now. We are exactly on zero. So on our schematic here you can see R17 and there's a couple of diodes around it. And these are two 220 um, 250 volt 20 microfarad capacitors. And here in between these two capacitors is a resistor R18 and it should be 100k 1 watt 
I just measured that resistor and it's checking about 150k so that's out considerably so that may be adding to the problem of not be able to adjust R17 for the 2.5 volts so I'm gonna go ahead and change that out so you know we couldn't get the uh, bias voltage to set right the most we could get was about minus 1.9 volts or so we couldn't get the required 2.5 volts minus now coming here and I changed out R18 and that didn't make a difference so I said well maybe the resistors I'm using not work so I put the old one back in still you know the same thing about 1.8 1.9 volts so I got the schematic back out And got in here and started looking. And I totally missed something here earlier. Let me find it back on the schematic. Okay. Now as you see we have our high pot bias and our low bias. And just to the left of that, there's an electrolytic. It's a 10 UF at 35 volts. I did not replace that capacitor. I did replace the capacitor up here in the meter circuit. But I failed to notice that capacitor. Now most of the time I'll make a copy of the print and I'll go in and circle the capacitors with a highlighter. You know, so then when I go troubleshooting I'll just mark them off I'll go replacing the caps you know just mark them off but I didn't do this for that because this is the customer schematic and I haven't made a copy of it kind of in a little bit of a hurry to go ahead and do it anyway so we see that capacitor and we'll come down to the uh, the unit here so you have to go one and now where is this? It is not on the uh, the board. So I get in here and I start searching, and I find it sitting right there. 10 UF at 35 volts. But then I notice something right here beside it is a resistor, and you see how black this resistor is that resistor has been smoked out so now we know that this resistor is tied to the positive of C8 and the bands look like yellow and purple so now I can take my schematic and go in and find it okay as you can see R27 and C8 has been replaced and I have checked C8 and it was shorted now I did not have an axle lead all I had was a radio leads so I went ahead and got that in and have the new resistor in so now we can go ahead and check our voltages and see exactly what is going on and as you can see, I got the big old Bariac out here because I wanted to uh, drop line voltage down. As you know, uh, when a lot of this stuff was built, it was based on 110, 115 volts is what it was built on. And line currents today is running as high as 122 plus volts. So I even put the Bariac on it and turned the voltage down just to see if that made a difference, and it didn't. And then that's why I went ahead and started searching in that bias circuit and found these other two components that was bad but anyway we'll uh, get in here as you can see I got the voltmeter hooked up We're on the 5 volt scale and it's going to automatically show more voltage in the resting position than it should as if it was in the uh, test position so I'll go ahead and hit test 1 
and you can see we have about three and a half volts negative this is minus voltage and we want to bring it right down to 2.5 volts with no problem whatsoever so we are now at 2.5 volts on our bias so for our next calibration we want to uh, set the short sensitivity and what we'll do is take a uh, 1 mega ohm resistor and put in between pin 2 and pin 5 of socket 1 then we'll press the short button and we will adjust R20 into the short lights just starts to glow and that will calibrate our short button so I've got our resistor placed between pin 2 and 5 so 1 mega ohm and we're going to press the short button and look at this light here and we're going to adjust R20 it's right on the back of the board on the left hand side until this light just starts to glow press the short oh it's not on there we'll turn it and there's just starting to glow and that completes that adjustment okay now grab the 12 dq 6 out of the uh, box over there and I uh, went ahead and set the meter up we're on socket 24 we're on uh, pin Z of our plate cap and we'll go ahead and set the heaters to 12 and I believe the sensitivity was at 65 let me go ahead and verify that just to be sure Sixty-five is what it was. And we'll go ahead and hit the test button. We're reading about a hundred percent. No shorts. And grid emission. You see, it's bad. So the only thing that we got to adjust now is the grid emissions. Okay, all the calibration is done. I had to search around the shop for, I didn't have a 100 mega ohm resistor. So I took a uh, bunch of, uh, I think it was 10 mega ohm resistors. And uh, there was 10, 10 mega ohm resistors and put them in series, attached them to the pin. And what I had to do was you hit the short button and you adjust it over to the green. And that concluded the calibration. So I now have a uh, 12 dq 6 in the tube tester and I got it set up. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a short test. And you can see the meter this way. And we'll hit the short test and there's no shorts. We'll come down to the grid emissions and we have no grid emissions Then we'll go up here to test one since this is only a one element tube well not one element but you know it's one section tube and we're settling off at about a hundred and like about a hundred and eight hundred and nine on the tube tester so as you can see, uh, you know, nothing really outstanding or out of the way on, on something like a tube tester. It's a very, very simple device to uh, rebuild, replace the capacitors, check all the resistors, 
look for capacitors hiding in places that you normally uh, wouldn't think they would be. <laughs> like again, it's always best to take the schematic and mark it up with a highlighter, you know, to find everything that you need to find. But as you can see, she's now up and running and like she wanted, you know, supposed to be. I got another 12DQ6 here. We'll just go ahead and stick it in. And we'll check it right quick. Give it just a minute to warm up. You can always see the filaments glowing. We'll go ahead and check our shorts. No short. No grid emissions. We'll hit test one. And that one's at about a hundred percent. So yeah. And I done tested a whole bunch of different smaller tubes and checked them against my old night. Which my nine is, you know, not a uh, mutual conductance tester. But it kind of gives me an idea of, w of where it's at. But now that everything uh, aligned up properly. And uh, we got it all back and going. So she's ready to uh, go back in the case and get it cleaned up a little bit. And call the customer and get another piece out the door. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, I want a whole lot to it. Just a simple little process. Things to look for. We'll catch you in the next video and uh, you know leave your comments down below. See you now.